Bulldogs quickly established themselves as the team to beat in 1990, winning the prestigious King of the Bluegrass and LIT tournaments. In addition to the big three of Brown, Morris, and Turner, the Bulldogs had three capable seniors in center Terry Jenkins, swingman Ty Scroggins, and Wheat, the point guard. All that year, we kind of grew, we were already close, but that year, we kind of grew a little more closer, you know, because uh, we've been through that loss the last two years, we done got beat, you know, now the goal was kind of set, all the pressure was put on us because going into the season, number one ranking is kind of with that bullseye, had the bullseye on your back, so everybody was out to get you, even though we hadn't done anything. We're not the defending state champions and nothing, you know, we we ain't even we haven't even been to the state tournament yet, you know, to get a taste of that. This time, Fairdale emerged from the brutal sixth region and will get that taste of the Sweet 16. It was built as a dog fight. It was the Fairdale Bulldogs in white against the male Bulldogs in gold. Fairdale's dogs would have more bite. Jermaine Brown gets the loose ball to lay up. Fairdale is up by 14 early. Mayo could have its moments. Chris Korn helps cut the deficit with three at the end of the first quarter. But Fairdale never let down. Mayo just really couldn't catch up. Carlos Turner buries three of his own for Fairdale. Stan Harden's Fairdale troops advance with the 80 to 64. State boys basketball title. The Bulldogs' latest victim is Owensboro Apollo. It was in the Sweet 16 quarterfinals from headed to Freedom Hall, where Fido was in the darker tops and showing a ton of ability. Dominated despite being forced into a slowdown half-court game by the Eagles' Jermaine Brown with that basket and foul. He had 17 points. The Bulldogs found a bunch of success inside, so made the most of it. Maurice Morris for Fairdale's biggest lead of the game, 19. It was 32-13 Fairdale in the third. Morris was part of a 12-2 Fairdale run. He goes in for another as Fairdale goes on to beat Owensboro Apollo 51-33. Terry Jenkins added 11 rebounds. Bulldogs are now 31 and 4 on the year. It's really a thrill to be able to play up here on Saturday morning. Uh, you're in that final four. It's um, you know I don't know what to say. I'm just as excited as I can be to, to, to get to compete on Saturday morning. They didn't play our type of game today. You know we had to play a slow down type games. I think the main job I had to do was hold off the big guys that they had in the middle. I, I, I was not really, really, really worried about points today. I was just worried about holding the big guy off the boards and get, uh, maintaining him. And I, I guess that helped us win right there. The Fairdale Bulldogs have had one goal. They felt their season would only be successful if they won the Sweet 16. And tonight they had their chance. The top-ranked Bulldogs advanced to the championship game with a 13-point win this morning over number six Clay County at Freedom Hall. 14,000 plus were on hand as the Bulldogs continue their search for their first state title. Maurice Morris to Carlos Turner, and that put Ferdale up, and they never trail. Morris then drives to the paint, and he gets the bounce on this play, and he picks up two points for himself. But uh, the story, it was Fairdale's quickness and defense. 84-71, to 71, Fairdale over Clay County. They're in the championship game. Yeah, I don't know what to say. We got people at Fairdale who've been coming to the game for years and years and years, and uh, this will be an ultimate dream, not only for our players, but for everybody in the whole little town of Fairdale. We got a lot of depth, like we got uh, nine players that can contribute well to the team, so we did all right. Uh, I feel good, you know, to be able to lead a team as good as we are. Makes me feel great. Uh, playing for the state championship is a big thrill, but the biggest thrill is going to be winning. It. Freedom Hall is top-ranked Fairdale, battle number three Covington Homes for the state championship. A crowd of 16,500 turned out for this championship affair. Fairdale jumped out to a 12-4 first quarter lead with some very sharp shooting in the early going. Fairdale coach Stan Harden showing the pressure of a title game, a little hot under the collar. Holmes coach Mike Flynn shouts the instructions. Fairdale came out hot. They hit seven of their first 10 shots. Maurice Morris with the jumper. Fairdale led 14 to six. Meanwhile, Fairdale's defense was forcing Holmes to alter their shot. And they shot only 29% from the floor in the first quarter. Early in the second quarter, everything was bouncing Fairdale's way. Morris comes up with a deflection and hits the reverse layup. Fairdale by 16. In the second half, Fairdale went back up by 11. Maurice Morris was on his way to 26 points. Later, tournament MVP Jermaine Brown with a screaming one-handed jam. Fairdale built a 12-point lead. And teammate Jermaine Brown, who was flying high, was on his way to 11 points. Fourth quarter, Holmes pulled to within three when Anthony Hughes drains this three-pointer. But Holmes roared back and got within three with four minutes left in the game. But Fairdale, with the help of Terry Jenkins, 18 points and 18 rebounds, 
wins the state title, 77 to 73. Fairdale over Holmes for the title, 77-73 at Freedom Hall. It's the greatest moment of my life. I did it for my mother. I love everybody. We number one. It just feels good right now. I can't explain this feeling. There's no other way to go out as a scene. It's something I've been aiming for since I was little, and I've achieved it, and I just I can't express it. My dad coached for years. The day before the first tournament game, a man that in the community, an older fellow, brought a whistle up to school and said, here, this belongs to your dad. I got it in my coat pocket right over my heart. And he said, I got another one I'll give you if you win the state championship, so I can't wait to get home and get that. The Bulldogs prevailed 77-73. Even though Jermaine Brand was named the Sweet 16's most valuable player, they wouldn't have won it without key contributions from Jenkins, who scored 18 points and grabbed 18 rebounds, and Wheat, who chipped in 12 points. That morning, uh, I thought I broke my ankle uh, in the uh, semifinal game against Clay County. My left ankle. I come down around it, swelled up and more. I thought I wouldn't even get to play. But again, all the pressure was, you know, this is it. Let on his evens, either put up or shut up. Are you, you going to lay in bed and be hurt? Or are you going to play your last game? Came out, it was a great game, you know. Give Covington Holmes all kinds of credit for that. But that night, we were a better team, you know. We kind of wanted him more and we ended up winning. A wild and woolly celebration at Fairdale High School today in honor of the Bulldogs State Basketball Championship, the school's first. The Dogs of Fairdale began this basketball season as the number one ranked team in Kentucky and finished it in similar fashion by capturing the Sweet 16 title Saturday night in Freedom Hall. The After the Bulldogs won the state title, fans blocked the separate celebrations at both Fairdale and the Southwood Community Center. And it wasn't long after the Nets were cut down in 1990, the talk of the Bulldogs becoming the first team to repeat since Mayo did it 20 years earlier started to surface. And why not? Brown, Morris, and Turner all returned. Senior Jeff Thompson stepped in and replaced Wheat's steady hand at the point guard position, and two other solid seniors, Sean Bishop and Tim Comstock, helped fill the void left by Jenkins at center. And even though Morris, Brown, and Turner were the stars, Fairdale was an unselfish team that got contributions from everybody. They were the preseason number one team in the state. Fairdale was also ranked nationally after testing its medal in the competitive summer AAU circuit. In addition to great talent, the Bulldogs also had great chemistry. While a lot of the players came from different backgrounds, they were joined at the hip, especially in the offseason. We all hung together all the time. I mean, you know, you know how, like you said, we go to Fairdale, everybody think these kids coming from the project are not going to interact with these, these white kids, or so to speak, like that. Our point guard, Jeff Thompson, Tim Comstock, uh, the freshman, David Hicks, Jason Gardner, we all just kind of gelled and got along. If we did something, we all did it. So, like I was saying, the chemistry, it was there. This is no lie. We would go from 9 a.m. to midnight, and I mean, we'd go to Iroquois, Wyandotte, down Southwick, I mean, wherever was Seneca, I mean, you name it, we would, I mean, we wanted to play basketball 24-7. In fact, it was through basketball that Fairdale and Southwick, a pair of communities that couldn't have been more different, came together. The players who were bused from the projects would spend many nights and weekends at the homes of coaches Harden, Gardner, and other supporters who lived in Fairdale. The two state championship teams helped dispel negative myths about the Fairdale community. As the school's counselor, Barbara Longacre was well aware of how many people viewed Fairdale. Oh, they were redneck. Yeah, right. Is that, you, so you heard that. Oh, sure. Yeah. But I'll tell you, in the, the thing in the very beginning, uh, they were, because I can, go, I can go way back, and you didn't have the minorities out here. But whenever they started to go to school together and the kids started playing ball together, football, basketball, whatever, I think sports pulled the two communities and the, and the different races together. Right. So when you had, they had a common goal of, of working on a team. Right. And, and I think that was another thing that made it special. We got a bad reputation out here that we didn't accept those kids. But that's totally wrong. They did not want for a meal. They did not want for somewhere to stay. They could stay anywhere they wanted to out here. They could go to any house they wanted to and got fed. They spent a lot of nights with me uh, at, at my house in the basement and stay all weekend. Um, one of the parents would take them home and feed them. 
haul them anywhere they wanted to go. If they needed to go home, then he took them home. Uh, on the weekends, if we were playing on a Saturday and they wanted to stay all night Friday night, that was fine. We we're going to feed them and take care of them. And I think they just became uh, uh, just a fixture here. Everybody knew them. Everybody liked them. There was no arrogance. There was no egos. Um, and uh, when they, the fans came in the gym, they were there to greet them and talk to them. And uh, I think it was just a, a perfect fit. And, you know, and, and they all became like a family to me. You heard things. I mean, from my, from my close friends that went out there, that played body, it's like, man, you know, I ain't had no problems. But you hear from other people, you might hear things. And then, of course, you'd be a little skeptical. But once you get out there, man, I mean, you know, them people give you the shirt off their back, just like, you know, people down here give you the shirt off their back. You know, it was just mutual respect and, you know, just love. And I never had a problem out there.